<laughs> What's going on, brother? Yes. We are back. Yeah, we are back. Chilling like the super villain that you are, my friend. Yeah. All right, we got another week of the Hangout Live here for you. It's been a long week since we've been here because we didn't get to do our full show last time. That's right. But uh, yeah, so it seems like it's been quite a while, man. So kind of freaking out here a little bit. Yeah. So, hey, brother, real quick before we get rolling, um, man, I want to take just a quick moment to give some serious props and condolences to somebody that we lost here today. Um, was it yesterday? Yesterday, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm, I'm bummed, brother. This is one of my icons, Mr. Ronnie Tut, one of the fantastic percussionists of our era, obviously well known for his time with Elvis, but did a lot of other project projects as well and was a, a phenomenal drummer. Phenomenal. Yeah, we, so. we had Bill Bill Sinke on here. He talked about playing with him, right? We did, yeah. We um, in together. I think that's where he said I'm, I have to go back and review the game tape to see, but, <laughs> see what it yeah, was. Yeah, I'm, I'm bummed, dude. I mean, honestly, bummed. He's he's one of the icons. One of the reasons I started with a drum set when I was young, you know, start playing a kit. So, um, rest Mr. in Blair, peace, my brother. Perry, Stephen, Greg, Veronica, yeah, yeah. All right, they're all starting to join in here and coming in, and we appreciate you guys for joining us tonight. Obviously, we got a great guest tonight, Robbie. Yes, we do. This is one of your guys. This is a guy that you brought to the table. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, makes yeah. it even more special sometimes. I'm telling you. All right, man. Let's yeah. not keep him waiting. Let's let's bring him in. What's up, brother? What's up, brothers? Yeah. How are you doing, my friend? Good. Good. How are you guys? Excellent. Right. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh, that doesn't look right with Robbie on the bottom. I'll put you up there, Robbie. You guys go oh, well okay. side by side. All right. So you can put, you can put me at the bottom. Uh, you, you can put me at the bottom. I don't care. <laughs> we never put you at the bottom, brother. Never All put right. baby in the corner. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's get into it, brother. So obviously you're in Vegas now, but your beginning started out in the United Kingdom. Back in, blah, blah, blah. we won't mention yeah. years, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, what uh, what was that like growing up across the pond? Come across the pond. Um, well, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a little different. It's been a culture shock, I reckon, coming to Los Angeles because I was from a sleepy village in in uh, Cambridgeshire in England, and uh, you know, like uh, maybe a thousand kids in the school, only five of us into metal. Mm. probably uh and then coming to uh to la where metal was like hard rock you know you had def leopard on mtv the world seemed to revolve around it you know and uh, mm. uh coming from coming from england where most of the stuff on the radio was like you know like culture club and uh and um you know the pop stuff mm. um and then it was just coming to like a a uh it was great coming to LA, just total, total coming into the end of the LA party scene and everything. It was great. Yeah, it was a good time coming out there. But previous to, were you, uh, did you have bands in like uh, grade school or did you just, what did you do at that point? How did you start playing guitar? What was the, what was the influence? Um, well, I started playing guitar because there was an acoustic guitar um, in the house, which I picked up one morning and. And my dad could play a couple of chords, so he showed me a couple of chords. And um, and then um, a friend showed me how to do some like a friend of a friend of my parents showed me how to do some sort of folk guitar, like Simon and Garfunkel picking sort of like simple stuff. And then and then I got guitar lessons at around oh probably like oh I must have been ooh, eleven or something eleven to sixteen. I had guitar lessons and I learned like a bit of classical guitar and a um, bit of, bit of, uh, well, most of the rock stuff I got from like albums, listening to Van Halen albums and Hendrix albums and slowing, slowing down Steve Vai solos and stuff like that. I got most of the rock stuff from that um, by about like 15. And I had a teacher called Phil Hilborn, who's the shredder in England. He's like, he writes for Guitar Player Magazine and he's like the, the, the guy who could do all the Yngwie back then. But, um, 
but yeah, I started, uh, you know, just strumming chords pretty young, like maybe like, I don't know, like six, even like very young. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it is. yeah. It is young. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you uh, hook up with some drummers, start a band? What did you do at that point? I mean, as it time yeah. went on. Well, the first band I had was with my next door neighbor. And we, we used to use a cardboard box for a kick drum. And we painted that we drew the, the um, in, in a, you know, we drew the logo of the band on the cardboard box. <laughs> and uh, we used to do concerts in the living room, you know, just the two of us. And, uh, but the first real band I had was called Indiscretion. And we used to play out at like pubs and stuff. I, don't, I would have been about 15. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What and then doing covers and originals or both? Um, that was original stuff. It was like at the time oh. of, um, you remember like, um, well, because they, they kind of were funk. They were like a funk band. And um, so I was playing the metal. So we sort of put this metal funk sort of thing together, which was cool. kind of, you know, that was the time, you know, the bands like uh, Color and stuff like that. And, um, and that was the only band I really had in England because I was 15 at that point. And I, and I did the audition tape for Ronnie at 17. So I came over pretty much after my first band. Wow. You're right. Wow. Yeah. So where did you do the uh, audition tape at? Is it, uh, I just had it? a four track. I just had a four track. I did it at home. I, I put like the last in line, the song, the last in line. I put it on channel one. And then on channel two, I did some soloing to it. And then, um, and then after the song, I just did some shredding, like, you know, like an eruption type of thing, you know, just like shred. And uh, that was it. That was the tape. Cool. cool. You, were, you were very young. Look at this See, guy. Yeah. 16. I made that, that is, tape. This is a youngster with a Mickey Mouse shirt on. I know. Let me put on my, let me put on my glasses so youngster. <laughs> youngster. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. brother. That's awesome. Yeah. So nice. people are already commenting, love the cardboard box props. You can do a lot with imagination. That's absolutely yeah. make it to me, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And I used to have and I used to play along albums on the drum to use, you know, like ice cream tub. Like drum and those are the days. Those are the days. You're breaking up just a little bit here. Let's uh let me check Wi-Fi standings. I'll I'll be off the screen for just a moment while you guys chat. Yeah, okay. You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, now that he's gone, it's better. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it's clearer actually. Well, but, what about yeah, you, but... Robbie? When what about you, what got you started? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what about you? What got started? You you started on the guitar. Oh, uh, you know what actually got me started was uh, my brother. I had a brother that was playing. Um, really only six lo months longer than me but he started me and a couple of my other brothers and a bunch of neighborhood kids all together yeah. oh, all nice. at the same time you know we all took turns playing and i was the guy that got up the next day and it kept doing it so right was, uh, and you to go going all the way through school all the way through you got in bands and yeah i actually had a band that i had with my brother for a while and then he left because he just couldn't stand the music business and he got out of it um, but the band was together for years, um, over 10 years. And then I uh, uh -huh. moved to California. And when I moved to California, um, and I actually did kind of the same thing you did. I did a four track recording of me just playing a thing I call Can of Whoop Ass. And I sent it to Rob Halford's management. And within a year, he had hired me to play in his band. Uh, so it's kind of similar, but I didn't play. Um, any of the material his material all i sent it was literally just a guitar solo i did on a four yeah track. it and then he just wow. he liked it and he remembered it when he lost his guitar player and he hired uh -huh. me to do their tour so it's kind of cool but simply and using the four track had a little yamaha you know i don't know if you were using a yamaha or what you had but it was you know uh, test task okay yeah yeah nice. that's an amazing story right so that was your first big gig halford that was my first yeah that was the first thing was with Rob was the first national thing I had done. Yeah. And that was definitely uh, an eye opening experience. <laughs> yeah. So for you, obviously, I mean, you went your first band as well and right into, you know, with the man, Ronnie James Dio. 
How did you get that exactly? I mean, I kind of know the story, but you should just tell everybody so they know how yeah, it works. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, um, I, started, I saw Dio play at Donington, Castle Donington, in um, 1988, I think it was, with Wasp. Um, I think Wasp, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Dio, um, Bon Jo. There might have been one more band. And I was right at the front, like uh, 70,000 people. I was right at the front. And uh, then I Kerrang or, yeah, yeah. And then I read in like Kerrang or Mama that um, Craig wasn't in the band anymore. And I, at the time, I was like a huge Steve Vai fan. And of course, I still am. Uh, but that was like my thing, the Eat em and Smile album. And um, I wanted to get a. I was like, oh, I've got to get a big gig because this big gig with Zappa at 18 or whatever. And that was the thing. I was like, I had to get a gig. So I thought, well, I'll send Ronnie to Dio. And um, so, I, so, I, so I made that tape and I sent it to the uh, record company. And they said, no, no, we, we're guitar players right now. Um, so I, I kind of give up. I was going to give And uh, me, no, 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 send it, send it. So I send it over to the um, to the fan club, and uh, in about six months, well, a few months it seemed, uh, I'd forgotten about it, and I, I got a call one evening from from Wendy Dio, from uh, you know, there's me with my family, have you know, having dinner or at like eight in the evening, watching Star Trek thing, and the phone rings, scratchy love, hold for Wendy Dio, and I'm like, oh, is this a prank? Yeah, yeah thought, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and she said. There. She says, hi. She says, Rose, how would you feel playing in front of 1,000 people? Said, well, all right. <laughs> I said, all right, I guess. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I was yeah, like, you know, yeah, that's a pigeon. And she says, well, can Ronnie come and see you? And I said, yeah, I'm playing and that. She says, well, well we're going to fly you over. She flew me out to L.A. for an audition at uh, 17. Wow. Yeah. So they flew you out with um, as a one way ticket or was it kind of like, we'll fly you here, see how it goes it, in kind of thing. Or was it? Uh... Uh, it was, uh, yeah, audition. They flew me out for an audition and um, I did the audition and I was really nervous. And I oh, said I to my dad yeah, and I said to my dad, like, I'm nervous. And he says, well, just look at it like this. He says, you're getting a free trip to, to the to play. And I said, well, that's a good way of looking at it. And the audition itself, Ronnie said to me, he said, um, he says, I really want this to work. He was very upset with me. He says, I really want this to work. And, um, and then after that audition, they gave me another one in like two weeks. And um, they told me, go home, get your stuff, come back. I went back for Christmas for about two weeks and then came back to the States. Came back to LA. So, so the two weeks you so you came back with um, that time was that was the second audition or was it kind of like you're you're pretty was, much in? And yeah, they they offered me the gig. So the first trip I did two auditions, and after oh. the sec yeah, and after the second audition they says you got the gig. I see. Yeah. And who was and who was in the band at the time? Was that Vinny? Vinny was in the band. So. Yeah, it was the classic lineup: uh, Vinny, Jimmy, and Claude. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then when the auditions happened, was it, uh, was Ronnie there for those? I imagine probably. Oh was. yeah, totally. We, we, the studio, you probably know it in the, in the Valley called the alley. Yeah. Yeah. We so, played in the alley. Okay. Did like and stand then, uh, up and shout rainbow nice. in the dark, last in line. Nice. All the, all the big hits. We rock. Yeah. And yeah. I tripped, I tripped over. Uh, at the audition and Ronnie goes, he goes, Oh great. He says, we've got Barishnikov over here. So that was my nickname. He called me Schnick. Why is that? Because <laughs> of the that? ballerina, because the famous ballerina Bar Barishnikov, he goes, Oh great. Barishnikov over here. Cause I was, I Oh, because you bit. tripped, you tripped, <laughs> yeah, I tripped in the audition. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Just, just one, as you remember. Oh, that's funny. 
That's funny. But yeah. So did he did he sing in the auditions or did he just kick back and watch it all? He sucked. I, was, uh, you know, yeah, you're breaking up a lot. It's kind of. Oh, I'm. So, how's this? Um, try again. Let me no, see. Better. Can Can you? Yeah, can you hear? Better. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah. There we go. So he did it, sing through the auditions too, pretty much. Just kind of. Oh yeah, he yeah we played through those songs, um, and he sang. and then they threw a he threw a weird jam at me. He says, he says, can you play over, uh, E. C sharp, uh, E to C to C sharp. And I was like, all right. So that's what they played. They played this weird, really weird, like chord progression and had me play over it. And he goes, all right. And we always throw that at people to see if they can play over it. Ah, nice. Yeah. And then it was, then yeah. it was in. So you, did you yeah. actually probably sign something with them, right? I imagine. No, no, no. It was all no. on the hands. No, it was all on the hands. Wow. Like when, yeah, Wendy Dio said, told me, she said, we do everything on a handshake. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And then that was over the Christmas break. You came back and that's it. You've been here ever since. Pretty yeah. much moved here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. LA pretty much ever since. And Culture now I'm in shock. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so, so we lost Matt again, haven't we? He's trying to fix the, uh, the uh, whatever, the problem with the glitch, I guess. He's trying to whatever let him do his techie thing right on he's right on probably, he's probably i'm sure he can hear us so yeah so yeah. so um so we were just doing a little playing together weren't we not too long ago we were doing doing some uh a little bit and you you had also sent me the uh the set uh for um oh yeah yeah for J for jrgw yeah 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 because that was yeah. going to be that at the end of this month in maryland but it got cut to the kick to the curb because of uh covid restrictions they uh, yeah yeah they got it they, and you would have been uh vinnie was going to be there because the last in line was playing on the bill right yeah vinnie and andrew and and uh phil yep yep yeah. they were all going to be there and roxy blue yeah. and I what other bands it was gonna be a good night you know yeah i i just went out to a pretty cool night here the other other week here in vegas it was um you know jeff duncan the guitar player jeff duncan I know his brother. I don't know okay. him. Yeah. Okay. Um, he he uh, he put on a night here at a club in Vegas, and it was called Eddie Fest. Oh, cool. Yeah. It was like t about a year after Eddie died, and they did. He performed all of Van Halen One with uh, Andrew Freeman on vocals. Oh. Uh huh. Um, Zach Thrown on bass, mm. and. Um, Alex Parper on drums and they had uh, Todd Kearns was there. He came up and sang and um, oh. all these other players, all these really killer Vegas players. It was great. It was really good. They did was, like two hours of Van Halen. It was awesome. Nice. Where was that at? That was at Vamped. Vamped. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Does, uh, does he live out there too then, I guess? Uh, the Duncan yeah. brothers? I mean, they, did, yeah, they were yeah. all Jeff. LA guys. I remember Odin from way back. I remember the band. Did you ever see them? I never did see him, but uh, I don't know how I actually heard about him, but I had heard about him years ago. And there was a guy who came in. I was living in Tucson because I grew up in Tucson. And this guy came in for guitar lessons and he told me that he had teched for Odin. I go, I know who they are. He goes, you know who they are? I go, yeah. And I don't even know how I knew who they were, but I knew about them and never yeah. did get the chance to see them, though. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah I know of... all those guys. I know all the Duncans and and um, I play with them in DC4. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I think that's when we originally met. You might not remember, but it was. I do. Week. Oh, you do. I, okay. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You and Jack came up and did um, like we did a Zeppelin. No, Stones cover, wasn't it? Stones cover. Uh, Aerosmith. Oh, Aerosmith. Yeah. We that's did uh, um, Sweet Emotion and uh -huh. we did something else. I can't remember. Did we it do was. Jumping? I want to say we did Jumping Jet Flash. We might have. We might have. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, remember the Aerosmith for sure, but we did a few songs. That was a while ago. That was like yeah 2013 yeah. i don't know time time flies it does and then oh, i yeah. saw you again with you were with oni and we were oh, in yeah. nebraska i want to say it was nebraska and we were in that little trailer, yeah. and you and oni came in and me and jack were there we were doing acoustic sets you guys did an acoustic thing then we did an acoustic thing yeah i remember 
Yeah. 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 That was a long time ago yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember which friend it is, but you know, those, those gigs where they have the, um, those throw together gigs, those festivals. Oh, what yes. Was, what was the name of that one now? Um, oh, I think it's the one that that guy just recently died. Um, the guy who put those on, he died of COVID just, just recently. It's, uh, I'm sure there's somebody in the audience who will remember that. Yeah. If Veronica's there, Veronica, you probably know. Uh, um, so I seem to have fixed our internet issue on this side, but I'm no longer seeing comments now from the audience because we had to reset the networks. Well, so I'm are seeing, you I'm still seeing, seeing comments? Okay. Yeah. Good, yep. Good, good. All right. Um, God, what was it called? Uh, where, where was the event at? And I can. It was in. I want to say it was Nebraska, but it might have been like Missouri or something. Uh, I can't remember. And I, I you know, I'm I just remember. not remembering the guy's name too for whatever reason. It's just a little bit of brain fog. Yeah. Oh, Rock and Skull. That's it. Rock and Skull. Justin Murr. That's it. That's it. It was that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we're getting some questions from the audience. They wanted to know when you first started in music, Rowan, how did your family feel about it and did they support your decisions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they did. They completely supported me in it. My dad used to come to all my gigs. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And uh they to they totally supported me. Yeah. So so were they musicians or artists or were they in, in the uh, biz or no no not really not really um my mum did a little bit of art but not really neither of them so growing up what kind of music was playing around your house as you were a kid oh well let's see um he he liked um they liked the beatles albums so all the beatles albums were in the house and um and some stuff like bob dylan and uh those types of things i would hear around the house and whatever was on the television yeah i nice. used to i used to i used to love all the beatles albums oh absolutely yeah absolutely Great. all right mm -hmm. and blair wants to know what uh what is your favorite song whether it's a song that you've done with a uh, group or just a song that you like to play to yourself what, what's your favorite chord? To, what's your favorite thing to play? Uh, let's see. My favorite thing to play. Um, ah, there's so many things. Um, yeah. I just I just worked out um, Clapton's solo to Crossroads the other day, which is kind of oh, cool. cool. Like, yeah, because yeah. I got there's a video of Eddie Van Halen. I mean, there's a there's a recording of Eddie Van Halen doing it on on uh, on YouTube playing playing Clapton's solo to Crossroads. So I learned that. Mm -hmm um oh man i still love playing along with all the i'll still i'll still play along with some like some zap for fun or um uh i used to as a kid i used to play along to my uh my 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 david Lee roth albums and um my zz top albums yeah and, cool. and ac dc and my queen uh gary moore um yeah still love all that stuff i i love listening to uh i actually like listening to black <laughs> i love black oh yeah brother positive right. positive <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah. yeah all right another question that came in is favorite band or artist that you have not had the chance to share the stage with oh favorite band or artist to sh uh, share the stage with wow Oh God, there's so many of them. Uh, let's see. Um, well, I did have the pleasure of sharing the stage with Giza Butler and Ronnie at the same time. Oh, cool! cool. How badass is that? Yeah. Well, let's no. hear about that. Let's hear, how did that come about? Well, it was the last show, one of the last shows of the tour, and Ronnie was considering um, going back to Black Sabbath, and uh, Giza came out and visited him on the tour, and came up and did Neon Nights. With oh, us. nice. Yeah. Cool. So we did neon nights and uh, got all got very drunk in the tour bus that night, <laughs> and uh, so that was cool. That was cool to to uh, 
to to um play with those two on stage and uh actually yeah. funnily enough that was the night that um that was the night that stevie ray um died that was wow yeah because wow. after the, yeah, yeah after the gig there was uh two gigs one was stevie ray vaughan um with with jeff beck and one was jeff healy remember jeff healy oh yeah oh yeah yep. yeah and i went i went to see jeff healy and then and uh, didn't see Stevie, but that was Minneapolis in 1990. 90? Yeah, I was wondering if it was 90 yeah. or 91, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What a tragic life to finally kick heroin and then die. In a, yeah, uh, yeah. But he, he got, he got. I didn't know he was was on that, but I, I know he got cleaned up, and and he, I yeah. knew he was very happy. Yeah. He was absolutely all right. Veronica wants to know what part of England did you hail from. I hail from um, well, well, Cambridgeshire, really. Cambridgeshire. Cambridge. The near, All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, near to near to where the actually where the Maiden guys came from, not too far away. I think they well, oh, wow. some of them. I don't know who, but I think Steve Har uh I'm not sure, but I think they they come from that neck of the woods ish, and then oh. obviously London, uh, obviously London, but I I, I don't know. I don't know my heritage comes from my heritage comes from Devon, England. Oh, okay, that's uh, south. Yes, yes, down there. I'm yeah, freezing up just a little bit again. Is it freezing up on you there, Robbie? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit. Yeah. All right. Sarah says her ex did a two-week fill-in with Bang Tango, featuring Steve Farilla. Yeah. After he filled in for you. Yeah, that what well, I did. I did like I think I did, must have done like six months with with Joe and the guys. And uh, Lance, Lance is the bass player. Yeah, and he he uh, he got Steve in to to do that gig. Nice. Oh yeah, you're, yeah. You're playing, still, are you still still with them? You still playing? No, with them? no. Oh. But I still I spoke to Joe today actually on text. No. All right. Nice. So, talking about nowadays, I mean, how have you been dealing with the the lockdowns and the shutdowns? Obviously, you've been affected there in Las Vegas greatly, I'm sure. Yeah, last year was was weird. I'm weird, weird for everyone. It was. I mean, I was just I was just on the strip today, and there's people everywhere, and I was just thinking how good it was to see everyone around and people in the shops and. Because it was pretty, pretty weird and scary, wasn't it? Well, I say scary, but it was. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah it was bizarre. I mean, it just, I, I wasn't out there, but seeing video of it and then just driving around. You know, you've been in it. You lived in LA for a long time. I was out on a Friday, drove down to pick up some records for, um, you know, Cleopatra Records down mm -hmm. in West LA. Okay. On a Friday, picking up the records for the band, driving back, no traffic on a Friday. Yeah. You don't see that here. You know what I mean? The traffic starts early and I'm driving at, you know, three, four in the afternoon, nobody on the road. I'm going, this is nuts. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? Like, it was weird. It was like go, stepping into a cipher. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was just bizarre. It was really weird. But things are going now. Then here in, in local of rock. Uh, yeah, the in town in Vegas for a Vegas show. Can you you're hear freezing, me? You're freezing up. Yeah. Can yeah. You, can you hear me? Check, 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 check. Check. It's weird. It was the pre show thing was clear and smooth, and now it's kind of not. Netflix, the room. Matt, what do you think? Should he just check back in? Because it's only his. Yeah, connection. yeah, yep. it's on his end. If he checks back, if you leave for just a moment, Rowan, and, and check back in, we'll bring and, you right back in. It may yeah, reset it, the. Uh, Matt, do you think? It, should I turn off the Netflix in the next room? It would probably help, brother, if you're running okay. off the of Wi-Fi. Let see it. All right. If I can turn it off. 
<laughs> yeah, I put him down there. Um, we'll bring him back in as soon as he comes back. So yeah, yeah it, I, I thought it, it was it was good. We're going. It was flowing good, but I'm like glitchy. No, no, <laughs> I don't want to. I know, oh, man. Yeah. I'm running around the studio trying to find new network cables and stuff. Now I, I don't have access to any of the comments coming in for some bizarre reason. They're still coming in over here. Some uh, Sarah says Lance is great. Tina's leaving. Oh, Tina going. I see how you are. Amy Turk says we have all entered the twilight zone. Steve, very crazy time we live in today. Amy says she'll wake. All right, Amy, cool. Drake, you look in California tonight. Look at Hey, California. they're back. Minnesota. I'm looking a little California. Yeah, all right, cool. I'm looking like I came from a uh, from a golf course straight to the studio to do the shows. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, you got your farmer's tan is kicking. Thanks, bro. Glad you noticed. You should see the legs. Oh, I bet. <laughs> but nah, it's uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, so dude, we should. I know there's some Dallas people and some people here from like Houston, San Antonio, something like that. Thanks for the uh, sweet shirt, very Newport Beach. Ha ha. Yeah. Um, I know there's people from this area that in Texas at least. Nice tie. Oh, uh, just a necklace, I guess. I don't know. Um, Tell your necktie. Right. So I've got a bunch of concert tickets. Matthew's brother, there you are, Matthew. That's because I don't, Matthew, if I don't have my glasses on, I can't read nothing. He can't see shit, man. We can yeah, make faces. So I don't see it. Fingers. I have to put my glasses on to see it. And the screen is, <sighs> there's only so many on there. And then and that's it. Uh, All right, looks like he's played. back here. Are we ready? We, I think we're ready. Yes. I think you you're you're looking good. You're sounding good. Excellent. Okay. Maybe the, maybe turning the TV off did the trick. All right. Okay. So we were saying during the break that I've got a bunch of concert tickets. And I know that there's people that are here in Texas what the hell? That like to go to, I mean, each one of these packs is a different concert that's taking place in Texas here in a place called Billy Bob's. So maybe we'll give away some tickets at the end of the show. Rowan, yes, we'll have uh, we'll have you involved in that. Maybe you can throw out a name if you. I'll, I'll send you a name privately, and then you can throw it out. You can. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> <fun. laughs> All right. All right. So let's get back to it, man. Let's talk about Violet's demise. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. 1990 is about when you started with Violet, is it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That How did was, that come uh, about? Well, after Dio, um, I, uh, I didn't have a gig. Uh, Wendy tried to get me a couple auditions for like maybe like a white snake or something, but I didn't get any auditions. And I, I wanted to start my own band anyway. So she says, do you, want to, do you want to play with Oni? And I was like, absolutely. I'd love to play with Oni. Um, so we started jamming, writing bits and pieces. And we, we formed a band. And I wanted to do like it, something real bluesy. Because if you remember at that time, you had the Black Crows out there and all this stuff. And, and, that, and I, I really kind of wanted to go in that direction. And, and he wanted to go in like a, he was like, no, do, listen to some weirder stuff. Listen to some like U2 and stuff. And I was like, oh, all right. So we, we kind of came up with this sort of psychedelic album, psychedelic rock album. And, and uh, unfortunately, it got shelved by Atlantic. So it's, it's out there, but just, just like copies of it, you know, the odd copy of it. But uh, it never came out properly, which was, which was a shame because it's a good record, but it's a really weird record. It's really weird. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, really weird. It's like, what, it's on. What makes it weird? Well, it's. Um, it was probably made under the influence of various weird things, <laughs> probably. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, but it uh, it was yeah, kind of like psychedelic rock, but it was heavy and very bluesy and like kind of the Zeppelin thing, really. But it's 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 good. It's a good album. It's really good. I'm proud of it. Cool. Nice, yeah. brother. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. you mentioned earlier being up on the tour bus with with Geezer and with uh, 
Ronnie James, we do a segment of the show called Tales from the Bus, brother. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> right? So let, let's talk about, give us a story. Give us something wild. The rock and roll lifestyle for all those out here that, that feed on that. Do you have a story from the bus you can share? Unless oh, your kids are yeah. ready for anybody around. I, 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 uh, I remember one time Ronnie and, and Willie Fife, his personal, uh, came back on the bus and uh, Willie's shirt was all ripped up. <laughs> I guess, I guess they'd, been in, they'd been in a, a nightclub and Ronnie had gone in duking. <laughs> he'd gone in, gone in duking. And uh, Willie got in there and, and, and uh, there was this, let's see, um, there was... Uh, I can't remember a lot of it actually because I must have been having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 looking back, I'm sure it just had to be a blur at this point, right? I mean, it was a blur. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was a really good time. A lot of, lot of, lot of fun on on the road. Everyone was in a good mood. It was. It was good fun. That's cool. Um, so you probably would remember as your first gig. Where was the first gig? Oh, that's a, that's kind of a funny story. It was uh, it was in Holland, in uh, in front of like like ten thousand people, and we were opening up for Metallica. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. special guest wow. to Metallica. Yeah, wow. on the and and Justice for All. Okay. How cool nice. is that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, so it was my first gig, and and. Uh, Getting ready to go on stage, massive great aircraft hangar, <laughs> like ten thousand people, and uh, the uh, lights go down, and and um, the intro tape starts up, and uh, and uh, my text going to me, he said, "Do you want me to turn your um, distortion pedal on your overdrive? Do you want me to put the overdrive on?" I says, "No, no, don't worry, I'll put it on when I get out there." I said, "No, that's no, okay, I'll put it on when I get out there." So the lights drop, intro tape builds up, spotlight on, on where I run on stage under a spotlight, and Simon the drummer builds up, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> gets get big intro, and I run out there and I turned my rig off, like oh. I clicked a button and I just turned the whole thing off. So I was like this, and then silence, total oh, silence, shit. yeah, and uh, and the crowd started booing me. Oh no! <laughs> oh, shit. I just heard like boo. <laughs> oh man! But we got it fixed, and the gig was fine, and the tour was fine. <laughs> wow! Just a funny story. Yeah, over... Scary way to start. How do you right? overcome those nerves? Well, I didn't really have too many nerves until like after that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But but, but I got to hang out with Metallica. Um, that was uh, uh, we went five of them. I think it was five gigs, and um, and we were all in a in a bar one night, and uh, the record company had taken everyone out to 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 the bar a restaurant, and. Hetfield was sitting by himself at a table, just kind of like this. <laughs> and uh, and I said to him, "Hey, sir, can I can I buy you a drink?" And he says, "Why would you want to buy a drink when the record company's here?" <laughs> like this. And I was like, <laughs> "I said, well, he's got a good point because <laughs> the drinks are free anyway." <laughs> but that was, that, yeah. But I I met Hetfield, which was cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, but I'm gonna but, get you a free drink. Yeah, yeah. He says, <laughs> "Why do you want to buy it?" But, um, <laughs> but yeah, supporting Meta to 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 be around Metallica on that album is just like that's a piece of history. It's like, do you know what I mean? It was the crowds were just off the hook. I mean, the, the yeah, oh, yeah. Those arenas, they were just amazing, amazing. That band. Yeah, and that yeah, was. Uh, Jason Newstead was pretty new in the band. That was his first yeah. record. And he came from, uh, he was out of Phoenix. I think he had moved from Ohio to Phoenix, started that band Flotsam and Jetsam. Uh -huh. And then he ended up getting the gig with Metallica. I actually had done a show with him that year. 
well, not with him, with him, but my band had played. They played right before us. Oh, and cool. I had, I had met him, and it was like him and the drummer were just amazing. They were really good. I was like, wow, these guys, are, they were heavy, but, you know, the bass playing and drumming were just ass-kicking. Yeah. So stood out to me. And then it was several months later, you know, probably, God, that was, I don't know. It was about must have been towards the end of the year september or october probably october all of a sudden he's with metallica i'm like wow yeah yeah and they, the they uh that's cool just so you sh you shared the bill with that band right yeah it was actually a battle of the bands oh, okay <laughs> and there was four bands on it and it was it was a farce but you know it was it was still cool it was, it was a fun experience to do i mean it was you know it was <laughs> 1980 Oh, so, you know what? It was no, it was long before that because it was eighty four. So it was before. Uh, it was before. Uh, God, yeah, it was two years yeah. before. Yeah. It, you know who? Uh, there was a band called. I want to say they were called American Steel. They had a, it was rigged for them. And mm -hmm. one of the guys came up after we played and goes, "Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are and how much people like you because it's we're gonna win." <laughs> and I was like, "Really?" And then the word started spreading around. And then when they did the, the winner of that night and they announced them people were booing and then it, that was it because they were doing weeks of runoffs and that was the end of it yeah. that night pretty much killed it for them because they just didn't really deliver the goods yeah but it was you know a, a guy once told me he says every battle of the bands ever has been rigged and that night after that happened i went hmm maybe he's right he might have something there so it's like doing like, kind of stupid. You don't want to go into it thinking you're going to win anything. If you're going to do it, you're going to go in it just because you're going to get some exposure, maybe meet some people or whatever. And that's what it was, basically. Yeah. yeah. So funny when I think back because it was 84. So it was two years later when uh, when he ended up joining the band and ended up in Metallica. But that's whatever. So anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so. Bring him back to Raiden the Rock Ball. When do you think this is going to happen, brother? Well, uh, I hope that um, the owner of the show, Sir Harry, he thinks they're coming back in January, January 2022. Nice. So for, yeah. the, so for those of the people out here that don't know what that is, let, let's tell them what that's all about. Sure, yeah. Raiding the Rock Vault is a uh, Las Vegas show um, where – we play songs, hit songs of, of the rock catalog. So it's basically like a, a, an hour and a half rock concert. That's basically what it is. And um, we start with like the doors, like my fire and end with jump. So it's like 65 to 85 and you've got deep purple, you've got heart, you've got eagles, everything like that. And the, oh, the yeah. people, oh yeah. And the people that have been in the show, you've got Howard Lease, um, Doug Aldrich, Tracy Guns, Blas Elias, um, Robin McCauley, and some of them are still with it. Paul Shortino, um, some of them are still with it, and some aren't. But it's it's a really great show. It's a really really good show, and I've been very fortunate to have done it for the last um, three years. That's cool. We That's were, awesome, we were supposed, brother. We were supposed to have Blas on the show, and he, things kept getting messed up. I love Blas's drumming. He's one of my favorites. I really want Definitely. to get him on. I just love that guy. He's he's just something about him is super cool. Yeah, and super you got cool. Play you played with him. Yeah, every night for like a couple of years. Yeah, really cool. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's such such a cool drummer. Yeah, seems mm -hmm. like a really cool guy. The times I've talked to him, but I mean, his drumming has just kind of got that long, lanky, just you know, beating the yeah. crap out of him. It does. Killer. You can swim through the pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where does so, the uh, show take place? Uh, well, we're hoping. We're, uh, we're, uh, I don't know where it's gonna gonna land, but it's been at three venues so far. It's been at oh, the wow. uh, Las Vegas Hilton, the um, Tropicana, and the oh four uh, the Hard Rock, which is now the Virgin, and oh, the um, the Rio. So it's been at four four casinos. But um, right. yeah, I don't know where it's going to land, but hopefully, as uh, they say, it's coming back January, January twenty-two. Yeah, hopefully it does. I'm sure people dig it. You know, it's, oh yeah, people love the show. Night. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's really I'd cool. Like to go see it. Yeah. I would like to go see it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. And he's, he's yeah. also, uh, Rowan's also working on a record with King Cobra. You guys are getting ready to do that. I don't know how far along it is at this point, but uh, I was kind of involved a little bit in the beginning, but got super busy. I mean, it got nutty this year for me. Of course, right yeah. now, just like we're not doing anything, but whatever. That's the way shit rolls. But that's yeah. cool. I mean, you guys are uh, pushing forward on that, trying to get it out next year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, trying to get all the final the drum takes at the moment and seeing cool. keeper guitars and stuff. Yeah, so cool. Nice. Yes, it's really fun. Awesome. Amy Turk wants to know who have you not seen live that you really want to experience? Um. Oh, these questions are so hard, aren't they? <laughs> like, uh, uh, I never saw, I never saw Eddie. Never saw Van Halen. Wow. Yeah, that was one I should have seen. Uh, did you guys get to see Eddie? I did. I did. Uh, the first time I saw him was in uh, California World Music Festival on my birthday in 1979. Okay. Yeah. And there was and now what, Ted Nugent and Cheech and Chong and all okay. these different acts were there. It was, uh, but that's like Van Halen was like this whole different thing. It was so different. So then I became a huge fan. Then I saw him again the next year when they came through town and then the next year. So I've seen him quite a few times nice. in the early days. And then I didn't see him again for years. And then I saw him in 94 or five, I think it was with Sammy. Cool. Cool. And Eddie was yeah. Eddie was he was the oh, king. Yeah, he was. Oh, uh, listen to this. Oh, so good. Oh, just amazing. And they, the, the night I saw him in the nineties, it was Steve Stevens opening for him. And it was uh, nice. It was badass. I mean, it was yeah. the whole yeah. show was so good. I was like, wow, you know. After Steve played, I was going, Man, that was killer. And then Eddie came out and did Eddie, and you're like, <laughs> yeah yeah i uh i i never saw van halen play but i actually met him once oh really and um because there was a band that wendy dio managed called ferrari oh i heard of ferrari and uh, the bass player became friendly with eddie and he would go to their rehearsals and they got invited to Valerie Bertinelli's birthday party at um, a bowling alley. So nice. I was taken, yeah. So I was taken along, and and we were all standing there. And Eddie came along and got introduced. Everyone got introduced to Eddie, and his hello, 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 and it's hello. And um, I thought afterwards, about five minutes later, I said, I've got to just tell him. I just got to tell him, <laughs> and I said, I said, went up to him, I said, Eddie, I just got to say you're just such an inspiration, <laughs> and he goes, didn't I meet you already? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. oh, yeah, but you know what, you know what? He's, he's still the greatest, and um, well, it, it, as an opinion, of course, but I'm sure it's shared yeah. by many people, but, yeah. but, but look, it, you know, it was his, it was his wife's party and you know some fans coming up some fan you know I'm a fan of his and I don't, I don't i didn't mind at all i mean at the time it was like oh no <laughs> that's, yeah, that's but, the thing but then but then i got stories from from other friends who said that eddie would speak to them for like two hours and was just just so it's you know you never know right how yeah. what kind of mood someone's in and you can't expect sure. them to be yeah but anyway <laughs> That Ferrari was that. What was that? Was that? Uh, what was that band? Were you in that band? No, that was um, actually Mark Ferrari. It was Mark Ferrari. Okay, that's why I heard of it. Okay, Mark uh, Ferrari, um, Anthony White, Chris McLernan, Oni Logan. That's how I met Oni. And okay. um, yeah, and, um, and was that before or after Lynch Mob for him? That was that was before Lynch Mob and the famous story is that, that Ferrari, not very nice for them. The story was that uh, they were playing at the whiskey and George Lynch came up to the dressing room and in front of everyone says to Oni, hey Oni, 
do you want to be in a band for <laughs> do you want to <laughs> do you want to be in a band called ferrari or do you want to drive one <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> Ouch. That's, Ouch. That's, that's pretty Ouch. that's pretty messed up wow that's, yeah that's swinging. and so he, what he, he was like well that's what am i gonna say to that <laughs> you're right i want to drive one well yeah and, and i know he um he liked the musical direction that george was going into i think yeah so did he, oh, yeah. did he leave into the band right then or uh, pretty much soon after then, yeah. Yeah, God, yeah. I got to get him on the show. I forgot. I forgot. I I talked to. Him. It's been a while since I've talked to him. I, I'm glad you remind me of him. I'm sure he's got some great stories. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend. Good friend, Obi. Yeah, good guy. Well, oh yeah, tell me needs to come. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'm hit him up. I forgot. I you know. I forgot, you know, I, I just feel like we're like, oh, we got to get guests. And I'm like, oh, and then all of a sudden I'll think, oh, yeah, hey, I'll give you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to get Rowan on here. I'll give Rowan a call. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 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 That's a good story about. Uh, wow. So, yeah. Wow. It's kind of it's kind of because you always you don't know, you know, never know where to tell those stories, really, because. Oh, you know we love I mean. hearing them because most people <laughs> sugarcoat stuff, you know, and it's yeah, it's, what you do, it's kind of hard. You're like, oh, what a yeah. nice. When you tell the truth, it's like, and, <laughs> oh, yeah, what? yeah. And the first, <laughs> the first time I met George, it was at the um, Roxy, and my roommate was was in Ferrari, and and I felt really bad for him about the whole thing, and. <laughs> <laughs> and I got into I got, I got introduced I got introduced to George. Hello, hello. And I went like this. <laughs> and, and George goes, "What did I do?" <laughs> he goes, "What did I do?" <laughs> oh, that's yeah, silly. That was great. That's great. Yeah, man. that's but fun. You your ma meeting with Hetfield or Eddie wasn't all that. Oh man, I'm I'm just happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to have met them. I'm really happy right. to have met them. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that feeling. When I met Gene Simmons the first time, it was kind of right like on. that. He was very kind of looked and talked to me. He knew who I was from the guy I was working with and stuff. But I was like, I didn't care. It was Gene Simmons. I mean, you know, the people are working. Right. Like, oh, he's being condescending. He's this. I go. He's Gene Simmons. You know, he's kind of. I'm just like, I, fuck it. I love Gene Simmons from way back. I mean, I went to my first concert was a Kiss concert, and I got up right on the front and I held onto the barrier and I sat in front of Gene as he spit blood on me and breathed fire over my head. You know, I was just like, that's yeah. So being able oh, to talk yeah. to him, like, it didn't matter what he said. I don't even know if I heard what he said. No, I yeah. didn't remember a lot of what he said, but a lot of it's just kind of like, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah. First concert, Rowan, what was it? What was your first concert? My first concert was Anthrax. Wow. Anthrax at wow. the at the Hammersmith Odeon in wow. London. With um Crimson Glory and um Metal Church. Metal Church. Nice. That's and it was loud. Nice. It was loud. It was it was really loud and I loved I loved Anthrax. I was a big Anthrax fan at that time. Among the Living and uh um the judge dread one. Oh. Yeah. Uh I'm the law. I'm the law. Yeah. I'm the law. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that that was law. the first yeah, yeah. That was the first gig. First big gig. You know, the first one I can remember isn't anywhere near that cool. It was Wang Chung and the cars. Cars oh, are right. cool. Cars yeah. Are cool. It was a cool concert, but yeah. I'd rather have been like Maiden, you know. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. my second big concert. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Did, you, did you guys hear that new Maiden track? You know, I, I have, um, and I've actually played it on the studio in the station here. But uh, I've been a Maiden fan. I mean, Maiden and Motley Crue were my two big draws into into the the heavier side of rock i mean i grew up listening to you know fats and elvis and jerry and led zeppelin and and all those things but when i heard motley Crue shout at the devil and 
maiden run to the hills and it just blew my mind man nice. so we were at a maiden concert quick funny story i went with a buddy of mine yeah and he got so jacked up pre-show drinking and smoking and doing whatever we did back then mm -hmm. we were at red rocks in colorado and he was like man i gotta go to the top and get something to eat I, i'm not gonna make it and like bruce is up there and eddie's out on the stage and they're just driving it and all of a sudden you hear bruce go what the fuck and my buddy's going head over heels back down the stairs and oh no ambulance had to come in and it was a nightmare oh man like, was, he, was he okay yeah i mean we went and visited him after the show but yeah he's like, like yeah they, they caught him dude. off like, they did. Hey, I'm watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're going to be at the hospital, right? I'm like, yeah, right after <laughs> yeah. the show, bro, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. <it's over>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sarah nice. says you're pulling my man card for seeing the cars and Wang Chung, huh? Yeah, I'm secure with myself, Sarah. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the cars. I, I, I should have some of the first stuff I ever learned was the cars music. Right on. Part of, you know, all that besides deep purple and whatever else beatles and songs and stuff but the cars i just liked them now wing chong yeah you know i don't know i guess that's cool <laughs> they were the openers i didn't have any say oh, okay so then, what okay. it was what it was my mom had box tickets for the company she worked for so we got to go sit inside the box and watch the show so yeah i'll take it I, don't. I also went to the Michael Jackson victory tour, Sarah. Pull my man card on that. <laughs> 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 All right. So we talked at the beginning, a little bit into the show, that we were going to give away some tickets. Cool. Do we want to give away some tickets to something? Yeah. So I know Blair Abernathy is a great fan of the show and lives in Texas and uh, probably wouldn't mind going and seeing a show. So Blair, you got to contact me. You want country or you want something fun? Because... I've got some Nelly tickets that we can give away. Uh, he's playing over at uh, at Billy Bob. So anyway, you're the big winner, Blair. Thanks for that. I appreciate that, Rowan. For okay. Taking a moment to do that. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy, enjoy the show. Have fun, man. At least we get to have Texas and have concerts and have things like this. I'm yeah. blind in Texas. Somebody says John McCartney. John, I'll give you some tickets anytime, brother. Anytime. We got you covered. All right. Well, I've had fun. Yeah. Right on. Me too. Me too. That's cool. So yeah, appreciate I will it. ask you a comment that was asked real quick. What were you guys watching on Netflix when you had to shut it off? Oh, um, my girlfriend was, I think she was probably watching like one of those vampire things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of them on there. There is. Just like there's a lot of zombie Chronicles. shows, a lot of zombie shows too. Right on. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy how many shows came out about this ridiculous virus that takes over the planet, right? Yeah, weird. <laughs> <laughs> cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my brother Rowan. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, thanks, Matt. Thanks, I Robbie. appreciate you, brother, for sure. All hey, right, guys. buddy. See you All right. guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Thanks very much. Yep. Cool. All right, Ryan was cool, man. He was fun. Yeah, it was. What was going on was about? It, it was glitchy at first. That was the only bummer. Yeah. I was like, oh man, because our, our signal was perfect beforehand. Then when it gets glitchy, I'm like, oh, we're missing out on all this information that he's. I was focusing right. hard trying to hear it, and I could catch words here and there, and I knew what he was saying. But it got better towards the end there when he came back in. It did. So. It did absolutely. So it Sorry, you missed out the show. Yeah, if, if you've got too many things running off your Wi-Fi, obviously it's going to bog you down on your connection. So yeah, that uh, might be something we want to make clear before we uh, launch the the shows to kill kill yeah. things like that in the background. Yeah, Kathleen, thank you. We 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 love doing this every week. So I will give you guys an update on uh, John Waite. It looks like John is out on the road and we will be getting him back on the show um, because now he's got his tech manager out with him. So he, he feels more comfortable that way. So we will give you an update as soon as that is relaunched. So we are working on getting that done. 
Hey, Don Sweet. Don Sweet's just getting in there. Don hooked up, hooked me up this past weekend. Thank you, sir. Did he? Yeah, that's when I was over in Tucson at the resort, chilling. Living life at the resort. Yeah. Then yes. when somebody, Amy Turk just got bad news. Uh oh, what's the bad news? Do we want to hear it? Amy, what's the bad news? Anyway, we're praying for you, hon. No, Whatever it is. No, he is a cool dude. Very cool dude. That's I love that he was straight up about how it was with Hetfield and Van Halen. It's good. <laughs> like, I, I love tell you about straight truth. <laughs> did I tell you when I met Hetfield? You did. I did. So we'll tell yeah. everybody else just to just to tell everybody else. So I'm working with Kid Rock at the time. And there's a big show. It was the final show at Mile High Stadium in Denver before they built in Vesco Field and all that. So I'm working for the crew, um, for Kid Rock's crew. We're backstage, green room. It's after the show. It was Corn, Kid Rock, and Metallica. I get somebody leaning on my shoulder, and they're like, man, my back is killing me, bro. Well, I thought it was just a chauffeur or somebody, one of the other privatized security guys that I knew. And I just turned around and looked, and it's Hetfield, man. And I'm like, you know, and Kid Rock's standing right here, so they start having a, a conversation back and forth. And uh, Lars comes into the room talking to what I think is the drummer from Corn, I, I can't be sure, and tells everybody to shut up that he's trying to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. You got like 400 people in a room that's like 20 by 30. You ain't gonna hear nothing anyway. So, kids, uh, kids' response to that was classic. He unzipped himself and said, "Hey, Lars, <laughs> did he did he whip it out? <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty much, pretty That's much. Funny. I wasn't trying to draw my eye attention down there, you know. You're like, oh, yeah. What is that? Yeah, you know, is this too small for my body? That's too small for anybody. Don't <laughs> <laughs> mind." <laughs> don't mind. Now, Kid Rock seems right. like a cool dude. I mean, he just he is like, a, what you see is damn. what you get. He fantastic dude, fantastic dude. I'll, I'll be honest, man. When I first got the post that I was going to be working with him, I was like, "Oh God, you know, here we go, another complete egomaniac, you know, off deep end." Because all I saw was, you know, obviously what the media presented. And when I picked him up and he got off the plane, I picked him up at Denver Jet Center. Uh, he had the mother trucker band with him. Josie was with him. He came off with the big mink and the, you know, the fedora hat and all the jewels and all this stuff. And the press was taking pictures. And he comes up to the car and he's like, hey, man, my name's Bobby. What's yours? I'm like, Drake. He's like, man, if we get too loud, bro, or anything, you know, you're under, we're under your control, brother. You tell us what to do and we'll do it. And from that moment on, he was just as cool as he could possibly be. Just a down to earth dude. Not like you, man, when you're all crazy in the back of the limo screaming, throwing drinks at me and stuff. Who, me? Who, you? You talking Who, to me? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> just the other side. I got to throw shit at you, make you feel at home. That's what it is, right? Yeah, you want to feel at home? I'll throw, <laughs> throw the chunk <laughs> at you. Right. So, when are we going to share a stage again, bro? When am I going to be able to put you out there? Um, put me out in what another show after that last yeah. one? Let's yeah, let's just bring you by yourself for like an hour and 30 minutes of you just shredding. Uh, hmm, you know, we could talk, we could talk off air. We'll see. All right, let's make that happen, man. Yeah. Kimberly says, Who, me? Popping bottles, shooting corks at the driver. You know how he rolls, man. I mean, you all are a relation. He's crazy, kid, dude. Kid can smoke some weed. <laughs> kid can smoke some weed. You know how else, who else can smoke some weed? A Snoop. Drove Snoop, and man, he was puffing, 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 but he never looked like he inhaled. And I was more stoned than he was trying to drive the car. There was and no puff in the pass, was there? It was just no. Puff. And I was like, dude, I asked him straight up. I was like, man, I don't be mean, be disrespectful, but why don't you inhale that stuff? And he's like, I can't do a Snoop impersonation, but he's like, little doggy, 
when I was young, we were so poor. We we smoked the seeds, we smoked the stems, we licked the baggie it came with. Now I don't have to. I can be decadent, so I choose to be. I had the freaking munchies, dude, for the entire chronic tour. I couldn't deal with it. A <laughs> little bit of a bogart, but I was driving, so it's all good. Puff, 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 pass. Puff, 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 pass instead of puff, puff, pass. <laughs> right. Hit me like every fourth time. I'll be all right. There you go. All right. Well, let's wrap right. it up. What do you say? Yep. Yep. Sounds good. Banana peels if hard up enough. Dude, that doesn't work. We tried that as kids. They're like, you can smoke banana peels and get high. Ugh. It doesn't work. I was like 12 trying that stuff in the basement no, of my aunt's house. That is disgusting. <laughs> Willie can outsmoke them all. Man, Willie can't find his way out of the bus. I'm thinking he's probably still stuck on this on the road again somewhere because he can't find his home. On the road again. There's a song, I'll never smoke, uh, I'll never smoke pot with Willie again or something like that. It's a hilarious song. Huh. All right. Toothpaste on a cigarette, Matthew. That stuff doesn't work, dude. We tried that too. It's all bogus. Bogus. All right, let's get out of here. All right, man. All right, man. Peace out. We love you. See you next time.